What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's going to be a fun one today. Um, we are doing the August TBR. Now I will be the first one to say that I have been trying actively to read a lot of my physical TBR books so I'm super excited about that. But more so than that I've also been trying to do a mix of series as well as like random books here and there. With it being August and with it being peak summer but also fall being right around the corner I selected books that kind of fit into all genres in a way no that is a hundred percent a lie it doesn't fit all genres i'm so sorry what i meant to say is fall vibes as well as summer vibes so i'm kind of splitting the month into summer and fall vibes and we'll see how it goes also i will say that this list is prone to change because while i am super excited to read most of these books some of these books are not super highly ranked on my tbr right now so we'll see if i actually end up finishing them or not um Thank you so much for being here. If you are new to my channel, then welcome to J Bay's Corner where we talk all things books. And if that is your vibe, then you're definitely in the right space. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for being here today and for joining me in my journey of reading. It's always so nice to have a community that supports the things that you do and enjoys talking about it with you. So I appreciate each and every one of you and thank you for being here. Without further ado, let's get started. So first up, I have actually an audiobook that I have been listening to, which is absolutely hilarious so far, and it's called Crimes Against a Book Club. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of this book. I'd never heard of it. I just came across it, and I was like, I'm a part of book clubs. I love to read. This sounds highly entertaining. Let's see what happens. And it's by Kathy Cooperman. It's so far absolutely hilarious. I'm on chapter 18. There is a total of 53 chapters in the book. And I have about three hours and 11 minutes of listening time left. I do not have a physical copy of this book. So I only have it on Audible. I got it on deal when I was looking through the Audible website and I was super excited to finish it. So this is the book that we're currently listening to and so far, absolutely hilarious. Story follows two best friends who have been friends forever. They are married, their lives are moving forward one of them is super successful super super beautiful like high high highly valued lawyer but also has very expensive tastes and doesn't know where the years went by now she is married and she wants to have a child she's in her 40s and she's on round two or three of IVF then we have the other female protagonist lead character who is quirky very very intelligent um, living in an environment with women that she doesn't necessarily feel comfortable around but she has been a part of this book club that she's recently joining going for the first time she has three children she has a husband that she loves and one of her children just got diagnosed with a medical condition that she now has to contend with and it may require her to quit her job which means that they need money they need it fast and so basically these two women cock up a, a, a scam if you will to sell face creams to this book club in order to allow for them to have additional income in order to support their very expensive medical necessities that are going on in their lives so so far highly entertaining definitely enjoy it very very entertaining um gives me a lot of upper east manhattan vibes like you know when you're talking about gossip girl like that kind of community that kind of vibe and then these girls just trying to like navigate their way through that world so very very funny so far i am enjoying it and would definitely recommend for anyone who is looking for a fast-paced read thus far so again kathy cooperman crimes against a book club is book number one then book number two this is the physical book that we are reading right now i actually started this yesterday i am 56 pages through it so far this is part of the dreamland billionaire series that has been sitting on my physical tbr for a while now i have heard wonderful things about lauren asher i have many a books by lauren asher in fact i have two books from her newest series these three books as well as four books from her throttled series have i read any of them no i have not so this is what i meant by i'm gonna sit down and read series on my tbr list i'm gonna do it so this is the one that i'm currently reading following the story of rowan um who is the youngest brother of the kane brothers and they are right um in the midst of dealing with their grandfather's passing and basically taking over their his legacy but his grandfather of course had a few tricks up his sleeve and was like if you want your inheritance you're gonna do a few things for me so 
Rowan is known to be a creative before all the horrible things that happened in his childhood turned him into basically this brooding, very, very angry, emotionless person on the outside. So his grandfather gives him the task that you are going to do a creative project at Dreamland and you are going to make it be successful and you are going to create a better environment in Dreamland, which is the park that they own. And enter in Zara, the main girl, and she is basically, um, you know, going through a rough patch because her ex basically dumped her and also stole her ideas that she was working on with Rowan's grandfather in order to make the park a better place. And she is currently working as a hairdresser in the Princess Castle where she basically transforms little girls into princesses so they can enjoy their time at the park. Um, Rowan and her have a terrible run-in to start off with, so definitely enemies to lovers vibes with this, with physical chemical chemistry being there, but they don't really care for each other. And that's the basic premises of the book so far, but now they're forced to work on a project together. So it'll be interesting to see where this book takes us. Then the second book in this series is called Terms and Conditions. This is following the elder brother, Declan. The storyline for this one is he is destined to become the CEO of the company. He's been looking forward to becoming CEO of the company, running the company that his grandfather has built from ground up and wants to do it all with his siblings. All three brothers have terrible relationships with their father, and so they really just want to have this family bond that's safe, protected outside of their father. Um, he has always been the unattainable bachelor, if you will, and he's always been a success. And so his grandfather basically says that in order for you to become CEO, you have to get married. So that's where it left off on this one. So I'm curious to see where this one will take us. And then last but not least, we have Final Offer. This is following um, Callum, who is the middle brother, and he is usually considered basically a screw up if you will he is intelligent but he's always been known as a mess um and so now he has been given a task by his grandfather to reconnect with his ex who he broke her heart and i think this one is probably going to be my favorite and i'm very curious to see where this goes because six years ago he left her behind and it was the biggest mistake of his life and now his grandfather says that he has to patch things up with her in order for him to get his share of the inheritance which all together each boy is set to get 25 percent of multi-billion dollars so they're obviously going to try and do what their grandfather wants them to do so that's this series I am excited to read them. I think it should be a lot of fun, and I look forward to getting my teeth into a Lauren Asher book. So super excited for that. Then the next series that we're reading, again, following that summer trend of summer romances and just like happy vibes, is the Twisted series by Anna Huang. I'm very, very excited to read these. I've heard wonderful things about these books, and people talk about them and rave about them on the internet. I've actually had people come by my house before, like friends and family members who have come by and seen these books on my shelf and been like, oh my God, I've heard wonderful things about this. Or, oh my gosh, I've read them. They're so good. You have to read them. In fact, um, I remember last time someone came over, they were like, I've been told by one of my best friends that it's phenomenal and it's her favorite series ever. So I was like, okay, maybe I should actually give this a chance. I did start reading Twisted Love, which is the first book in the series, like a few months ago, just picked it up and read a few pages out of it. And I realized I really liked the writing style and I really liked the book, but for some reason it didn't make it into my pick for that month. I can't remember why exactly, but I am excited to see where the series takes me this time around. So I am hoping to get through all four of these books. And these are not small books, but being romance, I'm hoping that they'll be fast, quick paced books for me. Then I have us going into more of that autumnal vibe, you know, school starting, we're talking literature, you know, the seasons are changing. So I thought I would pick up Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. Now this is literary fiction. It has had awards um, in its name. Reese's Book Club actually selected this book to be read as well. And it just sounds very interesting. It's gonna basically focus on the question of identity, cultural appropriation, diversity, racism. But the basic idea of the book is that there's two authors who have been friends forever. One is a white woman, the other one is an Asian woman. And while they're hanging out, the Asian woman has been writing and been extremely successful in her literary career while the white woman has not been. And so 
she watches her Asian friend pass away and happens to find her unfinished or, or just finished manuscript that has not been sent out yet. So she decides she's going to claim the manuscript as her own. She's going to market herself as a new author with a different name that could be um, either way. It could go white or Asian. You know, it can be any culture. What are those kind of names? So she rebrands herself as Juniper Song instead of being June Hayward. And she decides to publish this novel that her friend has written as her own. And it basically follows this woman and her journey and how far she's willing to go in order to claim what she thinks is rightfully owed to her. So I am curious to see where this book will take us. I've seen wonderful things about this book. I've heard you really hate the main character throughout the novel. So that'll be interesting. I don't know if I'm going to like that part of it or not or if I'll enjoy the book, but we'll see if I like it or not. So fingers crossed. This one's going to be another fun one. The only other R.F. Kuang book that I have read is Babel, and I did really enjoy that. That was a dark academia, so I think if it's anything like that, it should be very entertaining to read, and I'm very curious to see where this book takes us. So, yes, super pumped for that. Then I have Fantasy. So I have two books here, Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows. This is a series. I have heard these books be raved about. Now, I've heard wonderful things about Divine Rivals. In fact, most people rave that this was one of their favorite books of the year. They said that it's absolutely wonderful. It's young adult, so it's supposed to be fun, fast-paced, easy read. And it's supposed to be about two people who are communicating in the midst of war through letters, and the romance is supposed to be absolutely beautiful. Ruthless Vows, on the other hand, had mixed reviews. Some people said it was great. Some people said it wasn't. Some people said that it was really frustrating because the romance got left behind, but the storyline and the plot is there. Other people were saying that they read the book for the romance and it wasn't there, so it was very sad. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen in either of these books, but I am very curious to see where the journey will take me. So I decided that I did want to read these in honor of upcoming fall because I do think these are very fallish books and I'm all about the romanticy and the dark academia in the fall time. So we'll see where this takes us. Um, but that's the next two books on my list. So Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. Then, of course, we have the new Riley Sager book. Now, here's the thing. I freaking adore Riley Sager. I think Riley Sager writes some of the best thrillers and mysteries that I've read. Lock Every Door was the first book I ever read by him, and it still gives me chills to this day, and I still love it. The House Across the Lake was absolutely wonderful. Home Before Dark was another one that I really enjoyed. Um, the Final Girls was really good. I can honestly say there's not... Oh. Um, Survive the Night was also a fun one. I think in general, I have not read a Riley Sager that I don't like. There are a few that didn't quite hit the mark for me. For example, The Lies I Tell. The Lies I Tell? Is that what it's called? No, The Last Time I Lied. But that book was like meh for me, but that's also because I didn't really care for the main character or the other main character in the past that she kept reflecting back on. So that was a bit of a struggle for me. Um, I also would say that... The most recent Riley Sager book that came out, which for the life of me, I can't remember the name of that book now. Um, I will put it possibly in the description box, maybe. But that book is like, I felt like it wasn't that great. Um, so I didn't care for that one. That was the book we actually read for book club. So um, I did read it. I talked about it on the book club. I thought it was entertaining. It's still a fast-paced read. It's still a solid three star for me, but it didn't do anything to like write home. So we'll see where this one takes us. This one is basically about a man who had lost his friend during childhood. He basically went out and disappeared and there have been no findings of his body, no findings or presence of that boy. And so he decides that he's going to go back home. And when he goes back home, there are things that are happening that give signs of Billy's appearance, which was the name of the kid that disappeared um, as a 10-year-old in their cul-de-sac. And so basically, here's the little excerpt. In the latest jaw-dropping thriller from best-selling author Riley Sager, a man must contend with the long-ago disappearance of his childhood best friend and the dark secrets lurking just beyond the safe confines of his picture-perfect neighborhood. 
So I think this is going to be a really fun read, fast-paced, enjoyable, and I need a thriller that's actually going to thrill me. Midnight Feast didn't quite do it for me last month, so I'm excited to get my teeth into this and see where this takes me. Then we have more dark academia vibes, which will probably be read closer to the end of the month, and they are also the book club picks, so I'm excited for that. The first one is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is the selection that was made for the Overbooked Book Club. That is the book club that I'm on on Facebook. We put up a poll every month to select a book for the upcoming month, and then we meet up either on the last Wednesday or the last Sunday of every month to discuss the book. And I usually put the Zoom link up for the discussion the day before or the day of the discussion. And so we usually have a pretty decent turnout. It's been a little bit slow over the summer, but I think it's also just because it's the summer. Um, but if you enjoy a good book club where you get to help pick a book for the for the month and then you want to just chit chat with other people with like minded interests and things like that. Go check us out. Again, it's called The Overbooked Book Club on Facebook, and we will be reading Donna Tartt's The Secret History. This book is also, I think, exciting for me to finally actually sit down, pick up, and read because I know this is like obvious, often been defined as like quintessential dark academia, and I know it kind of put the genre on the map. So I'm very curious to see where it takes us. The only thing that makes me scared is the writing is so small like so small and the book is actually quite long um this is almost 560 pages so it doesn't look it but it's 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 a long one so it's going to take me some time to chew through this book but i know i will get through it and i know i will enjoy it and i can't wait to discuss it because it is our book club choice book then the other book club that I'm part of is called Paper and Glam. That is run by a wonderful woman named Lisa Marie Landreth. And we have a group of women who are just absolutely great in that group. Those books are selected a year in advance. Um, there are polls that are put out and we do get to select on the polls which books you want. But you know ahead of time what books are coming out for that um, for the upcoming year. And so for the month of August, the selection was Party Girls Die in Pearls, and this is by um, Plum Skies. She actually made this into a, sorry, Plum Sykes, but she actually made this into a series, and so I'm excited to read about it. It's basically about a young girl who is going to a university where it's known for its money, it's known for academia, and it's known for its... Um, networking and all these things and she thinks she's just gonna walk in she's gonna take some classes you know she might be introduced to a, a sorority or something like that and life's gonna move on but on her first day there she happens to walk across the library and finds a woman who has her throat slit open and has pearls on and she decides that she is for sure gonna figure out what happens she enlists the help of another student and they basically go on an adventure to try and figure out who the murderer is but of course as you guys know in any thriller when you try to lock down on who the murderer is the murderer is gonna come after you so that's basically the vibes of this story this is apparently a series so I think if I really like this I will pick up some of the other Oxford girl mysteries that have been released but this is taking place in Oxford University in the year of 1985 so we'll see where the journey takes us with uh, pretty girls die in or sorry party girls die in pink and enjoy the scenery of the university if if I miraculously managed to get through these books and let's just count here two four six eight ten twelve thirteen fourteen already if I can miraculously get through all 14 books which is already a stretch but if I can somehow manage to do it and have extra time the other book that I will probably read is Bright Young Woman by Jessica Knoll. That's also set in an academic setting. That'll also be a later in the month book, potentially transitioning from August to September as it is a dark academia vibe. And I'm very excited for that as the season is coming in. But I do think that once September starts to roll around in particular, it'll definitely be more fall themed books. There might be some fall romances here and there, but mostly it'll be like um, more of that thriller more of the sci-fi, more of the dark academia vibes in September, and then October will be very much Halloween vibes, and then November and December will probably go back to the lighter books, the happier books, the Christmassy books. But that is the very ambitious selection 
of novels I have on my August TBR. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are excited to go on this journey with me in the month of August. I will definitely keep you posted on what I think of all the books and I'm so excited to have you here with me. If you are new to the channel, thank you so much for joining us and coming and visiting me in this little corner of the internet at JBase Corner. And if you are a repeat visitor, thank you so much for coming back. Please do consider hitting that subscribe and notification bell if you like bookish content and maybe a little bit of travel, a little bit of fashion here and there, um, but primarily 95% book vibes. Um, I put out videos every Wednesday and Sunday and would love to see you back. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.